The business relationship management process. So this is another one inside service strategy that we have to consider. So what's the purpose of this process? It's to establish and maintain business relationships between our service providers and our customers. We need to identify the customer needs to ensure the service providers can meet those needs. Because again, what's the service provider's role? It's to provide a service to our customers. And that service is supposed to provide value to our customers without the customer taking on the cost and the ownership of the service. That's the whole concept here. And this business relationship management is making sure that occurs. So the first thing we need to do with business relationship management is to mitigate the needs. So we need to understand, inform, and meet the customer's perceived needs. Notice the word perceived. And then we need to communicate those needs inside the service provider's organization. So if I'm a web hosting service and I meet with an outsourced customer, I would go to that customer and figure out what they need. Do they really need cloud storage? Or do they just need to be able to host a public-facing website so people can access it? Do they need one server or do they need hundreds of servers? They may perceive that they have a need for hundreds of servers, but I might show them that they really only need 10 servers. This again is that relationship, that give and take to make sure I'm providing them the service they need at the value that they want. The next thing I do is I'm going to identify trends. I need to identify technology trends that could impact the services to a particular customer. In the old days, the only way to host a web server was to have a physical server for each and every customer. Then we got to the point where we could do multiple hosting of IPs and we could do shared services and virtual services. And now we have virtualized servers and cloud servers that can do hundreds and thousands of customers on a single server. So again, we identified those trends and we moved with it and helped bring the customer along with us. That's one of the other things in this relationship management that we have to do. We have to identify changes, right? There's changes in a consumer's environment or a customer's environment. How are we going to flex as a service provider to provide them what they need? So one of the huge moves over the last couple of years has been virtualization. Everything has gone to virtualization. Is our customer able to move and shift with it? So now, even besides having virtualized servers, we have virtualized switches and routers. So maybe they don't need to buy a service management package for a whole bunch of hardware switches and routers. We might be able to put in a virtualized solution for them. Again, they're shifting business models, and we as a service provider want to shift with them to keep that relationship going into the future. Mediation. So what do you do when things go wrong? Well, we have to mediate the requirements from multiple customers that need different things from the same service. So if I am hosting a single server, and I'm sharing that out with virtual services to 10 different clients, and one client is abusing that server by hosting very high bandwidth things that's impacting the services of the other nine, that's something we're going to have to mediate, right? And so we need to work those requirements between multiple customers and make sure that our service is able to support what they need, but is still minimizing the risk and the cost. So that's where mediation comes in. The next thing we have is a complaint methods. So what happens when that one customer has a problem? Do we create formal complaint methods and procedures for each customer? Usually we do. Right? We need to ensure that we consider an escalation process as well. So not only will the customer come to their point of contact, their business representative inside our organization, but what happens if that guy isn't helping them the way they want? Well, they're going to want to go to that guy's boss, and we need to know what those processes are. So that's all part of business relationship management. Now, again, we talked before about type 1, type 2, and type 3 service providers. Let's consider if we have an internal service provider, a type 1 or a type 2. Their business relationship management is going to look different than a type 3. So with type 1 or type 2, it's going to be senior IT managers who meet with the heads of other business units. So if I have a type 1 service provider again back in accounting, the IT manager or IT director is going to talk with the accounting director and make sure they're getting the service they want. Now, if we're looking at a type 3, for instance, where we're doing external customer support, this is usually more like your sales manager or your customer relationship manager, and they're going to be an account manager assigned to a particular commercial relationship. So I, as the web hosting guy, want to make sure that my website customers are happy. We might work with them directly, and that would be through our account managers. And those account managers are the belly button into our organization when there's an issue. 